Hello everyone, today I'm here to do my 2020 reading survey. So I've been doing this reading survey for, I want to say three or more years now. It's been a while. So this survey is on Perpetual Page Turner's blog. And basically it's a whole lot of questions. Like there's a lot of questions I don't even answer in them because it just pertains to blogs and things like that. But they're all questions about like books you've read this year. And I like to do it because I know a lot of times we all expect our favorites or our least favorite books at the end of the year or you know the beginning of the new year and things like that. And there's a lot of books, especially if you read a lot, like myself, that kind of get lost. Um, so this questionnaire really just asks a lot of different questions and is the perfect opportunity to talk about some books that maybe I don't normally talk about that's not a favorite or a least favorite or things like that. So I'll link down below for you if you want to check out this little questionnaire survey and do it for yourself. I highly recommend you do because it's really fun to do it and just look at your books and really like figure out what book fits with that question and things like that. So like I said, it's like 30 questions. So let's get to it. The first things are always stats. So number one is the books you read this year. And for me, hopefully if things go correctly, it should be 140 books, which is a lot. So that's a lot to COVID. So I don't know what to say. Um, then you have number of rereads and I'm a horrible rereader, so it's usual, it's at, a, it's at a zero. And the last one for stats is genre you read the most from. Not surprised here, number one is romance. I read 59 romance books. That's a good portion of the books I read this year. So by romance, I include a lot with romance. I include kind of like woman's contemporary chiclet. I just kind of classify it all under the romance like genre. Whether you agree or not, I don't know, but there's that one. So, number one, the first question we have is best book you read in 2020. So I mean, my, my favorites list hasn't even come out yet, but I think everyone's probably gonna, I'm sure everyone's gonna probably guess House of Blood and Earth by Sarah J Maas. Yes, this is my favorite book. I have a whole video on it. You can figure out more on it. <laughs> Next question is book you were excited about and thought you were gonna love more, but you didn't. Number one would be The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I wouldn't say I was overly excited about it, but I had a lot of expectations for it because I really loved the Hunger Games trilogy, as a lot of us do. And so I was very intrigued by what she was going to do. And overall, I was just very let down by it. It just wasn't that great, honestly. Another one is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. This is her first foray in the contemporary, and I really had a lot of hopes for it because I've read all of her books, love them. And this one, I just, I, I didn't really like it all. So I was excited for it, and it, it did let me down. Next up is most surprising in a good or bad way book you read. And I actually have a lot for this one. So number one is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Um, I've read all the Riley Sagers books before and I like them. I didn't love them. So when I heard this one was coming out, I was like, oh, I was excited for it. And like, it, it's probably gonna be middle of the road for me, but I ended up loving it. And it's one of my favorite thrillers of the year. And I gave it a five out of five. I was surprised by that. So that's why I put it on here. And another one is A Cuban's Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. This one, I, you know, I read a lot of YA contemporary because honestly, they're just happy go lucky books. This one I just really loved and it's really resonated with me. And and I don't know, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it and it surprised me because of how much it stuck with me throughout. Like it's been like four or five months since I've read it. I'm still thinking about it. So I really enjoyed this one. So it was definitely very surprising. Next up is book you pushed people to read the most this year and they did. Whether or not you did, you'll have to tell me. But the number one book I definitely say I pushed a lot <laughs> would have to be Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Bailey. It's an adult paranormal romance vampires one of my favorite books of the year as well. I definitely pushed this one a lot. If you read it or not, if you read it because of me, let me know. Did I push you to read it? I'd love to know. Next step is a whole bunch of questions. So best series you started, best sequel, and best series ender. So best series I started is definitely going to be Chris and Suter. There's no secret about that. Best sequel. That's funny because I don't read a lot of sequels anymore. I've fallen so behind on that. My fantasy genre reading has just gone astronomically horrible. So the only sequels I've read are like kind of companion novels, like romance ones, such as Girl Gone Viral, um, the Happy Ever After playlist. There's also This Time Tomorrow by Tessa Bailey, which is a sequel to Reborn Yesterday. So those, do those count? I don't know. But the best series ender, hands down, A Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. 
so many feelings for this one. So sad this series is over. Next question is favorite new author you discovered in 2020. So this could be either a debut author or a new to you author. So I'm actually going to go with again <laughs> Laura Taylor Namey. I actually purchased her debut novel um, a little bit after I read this book so I really love her books. And the other one that is new to me is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. I really love this book. Just so sweet and so romantic. Loved it a ton. Is best book from a genre you don't typically read and was out of your comfort zone. So this year was the first year I read horror books and I always said I would never read horror books and I always say stuff like that and then I break on it. So I read three horror books that were, you know, I could handle them. <laughs> and my definite favorites from that would have to be Kill Creek by Scott Thomas, easily the scariest book I've ever read. This is like about a whole bunch of authors and a haunted mansion, things go crazy. Definitely very scary, but it was horror and I really enjoyed it. Likewise with Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Morana Garcia. Again, kind of a gothic-y horror mansion, very, very creepy. And the one, the first horror book I read in the entire year was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrick. I read this one because vampires, we all know my affinity for them. But yeah, I read like four horror novels. I was very surprised in that, but I think I could read some of them if, I don't know, I'm just as scared chicken, honestly. That's all I am. Next up is most action-packed, thrilling, unputable down book of the year. This is such a hard question to answer. Like, do I pick a fantasy book that had a lot of things going on to it? Do I pick a mystery thriller? What do I do? So I decided to just go with a mystery thriller that really kept me on my toes, that I was really invested in, that I was like, I couldn't wait. I just kept wanting to read and read and read. And for that one, I'm going with The Night Swim by Megan Golden. This is definitely one of my favorite thrillers I read this year. It's like a podcast element and it just, I really enjoyed the way it was written. I definitely think it could be an amazing audiobook. I didn't listen to it, but I'm sure a lot of people have. But this was, you know, it definitely was very thrilling to me. Book you read in 2020 that you will most likely to reread in next year. As I say, I don't reread a ton. A lot of times I will just kind of skim through um, romantic books that I love that I've read that year. Like I think I've already done that a lot with like Reborn Yesterday, Taking Hit Danny Brown, things like that. So I guess that could be my answer for that. I am horrible. Next up is favorite cover of a book you've read in 2020. And for that, it's going to be A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is um, the Alcree edition. I believe the the actual one's very similar to that, but it has gold splayed edges. It has this in the background. It's got this beautiful end papers, and it even has like maps and stuff in here. I just, I love this cover so much, so easily. And this could arguably be another um, series that's a favorite that I started this year that I will hopefully be continuing with. Next up is most memorable character of 2020. For that is going to be Danny Brown from Take a Hit Danny Brown. She was fun. She was sassy. She was confident. I loved her a ton and is easily a memorable character. Next up is most beautifully written book of 2020. For that one, I have had to course go with Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This book is written in verse and I don't read a ton of books in verse, but I love the way Elizabeth Acevedo writes. Like she writes such beautiful and just very poignant. Is that the right word? It's very just hard hitting and so many I don't want to say verses in this book that I just loved so very much that I would just bookmark, read them over and over again. So this is easily hands down the most beautifully written book. And I love the cover. Should it be my favorite? No, stick with your answers and move on. Next up is most thought provoking, life changing book of 2020. And for me, um, <laughs> I don't read like a lot of hard hitting books. Clap and you land could be one. Also, a Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds is the graphic novel. This was definitely very thought provoking to me a ton. I have also read a lot of nonfiction books. Um, another one, It's Not Supposed to Be This Way by Lisa Turquoise, I really resonated with. It was definitely very thought provoking. Book you can't believe you waited until 2020 to finally read. I have two for that. Sorry, I have to keep going because I have like stacks of books everywhere. So number one, Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. I finally read this year. Can't believe it took me forever to read. It's a historical classic. We all know this. It was amazing. Loved it. Um, also, The One by John Mars. A lot of people kept talking about this book. I've heard about it for years, and this year I just decided finally to read it. Can't believe I waited till 2020. One of my favorite thrillers. So mad at myself. But hey, I read them both this year, so that's something. And next up, we have some more stats. So we have um, the shortest and longest book you read in 2020. So the shortest one is actually a short story. 
Who would have thought it? Booked for Christmas by Lily Menon came out at 89 pages. And then our my longest one I've read, and actually probably one of the and longest book, probably one of the longest books I ever read was House of Blood and Earth. This one came in at 803 pages. Like she's she's a thick one and she could be a weapon probably. Next up is book that shocked you the most. There's so many. There you could use like a thriller, whatever. I decided to go a little bit out of that, maybe. I don't know. Horrid by Katrina Leto. Like the ending shook me and like it was such a cliffhanger but like I was there for it. It definitely shocked me. I really loved it. OTP of the year aka one true pairing we will go down with the ship. No one should ever be surprised. Jonas and Jonas and Jenny obsessed obsessed beyond obsessed. Next up is favorite non-romantic relationship of 2020 and this one was hard because there's so many amazing friend groups and just um things like that but the one that really that I just loved a ton that's a recent read sorry it's going to be Laya and Helene's friendship in this book. I loved it so insanely much like it grew leaps and bounds and I was here for it like I loved it. Favorite book you read in 2020 from an author you've read previously? Again, a lot of these I could talk about. I have several I try to pick because I try to pick a lot of books, so you see more. Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I've read two of her other books. Love them. Also, Party of Two by Jasmine Gilroy. Really enjoyed that one. And then I didn't even pull Beach Read. Beach Read by Emily Henry. There's so many. I mean, Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Bailey. There could be that one. There could be just a lot. Best book you read in 2020 that you read based solely on a recommendation from somebody else slash peer pressure. The One by John Mars. Like I said, everyone was commenting like, you should read The One, you should check it out. Especially when I did like a picture of a library haul because I even got it from the library and still didn't read it. I had to buy it because I'm horrible. But this one I definitely read because a lot of you guys told me I would love it. Newest fictional crush of a book you've read in 2020. Jonas, that's, that's all I'm gonna say. If you like vampires and like steamy times, this book guys best 2020 debut you read oh, i originally had you had me at ola but this is not a debut book so whoops <laughs> tweet cute by emma lord that was a debut novel it was really cute best world building most vivid setting you read this year honestly for me where is the book? There it is. <laughs> As a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Yes, it is info dumpy, but goodness me, does she put a clear picture of what the school is supposed to look like. There's even like a map in this book and it just really brought it to life and it was very vivid. Like I can still remember how the school is, how it's laid out and things like that. I really love this book, even though, again, it is insanely info dumpy. Next up is book that put a smile on your face was most and was the most fun to read. So for the most fun to read, I'm definitely gonna have to go The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I wasn't expecting much out of this. I honestly just wanted a fun read and it was exactly that. It's kind of like a murder mystery, knives out kind of situation, only YA. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I forgot this one. How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. I think this is her first book. Please tell me this is your first book. So yeah, I think this also could be my favorite debut novel, How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. This one put a smile on my face. It's a cute romance that I don't hear a ton of people talk about that needs to be read. I loved it. Book that made you cry or nearly cry in 2020. This one made me sob a lot, like freaking broke my heart. This one many times. Hidden gem of the year. I literally just talked about it. How to Fill Up Flirting. Not a lot of people are reading this. I know it's being released in December, but I read it much early due to like neck alley, but I really enjoyed it. Don't miss out on this. It was super cute. Also, Girl Gone Viral. I haven't heard a ton of people talk about this book. I really loved it. Highly recommend it. What's another kind of hidden gem, if you will? I guess you could say Human's Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. I just really love this book. <laughs> that one too, a lot of them. Um, book that crushed your soul. Oh my gosh, how many times do I have to use this? This one crushed my soul like several, several times. Most unique book you read. I'm gonna have to go with two books that are both written in verse. Number one, Clap When You Land, again, because it was written in verse and just had such an impact and definitely long way down the graphic novel. Now the graphic novel isn't told in verse, but I know the original one is, but this is the most unique because like I said, it's translated from a book that was written in verse to a graphic novel. And I just love the artwork in this. It's stunning, so impactful, definitely brought the message to it. The last question is book that made you the most mad. Doesn't necessarily mean you didn't like it. Well, I'm gonna answer, I didn't like it for that one. So that one, I'm gonna have to go with number one, 
Hidden Bodies by Carolyn Kepnes. That's the sequel to you. Oh, how I loathe thee. I, I hated that book. <laughs> Same with The Wise by Taryn Fisher. Did not enjoy it at all. Can we sense a theme here of books I didn't like? One by One by Ruth Ware. Didn't like it. And last one, The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Love the guest list by her. Did not like this one at all. That was the 2020 reading survey. Do I have a thousand books around me right now? Yeah, it's gonna be real fun putting them all back on my shelf, but that's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this and hope you got to see a little bit more of the books I read this year, not just my favorites and least favorites, but kind of ones that I still really love that I want to talk about. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.